So the installation of toolbox is pretty easy. Just remember, we need to go to the add-ons here. And type in the name of the toolbox. And after the installation, you can type this command to check if you have the toolbox or not. It's in the uh, specification of our lab. Let me check. It is in here, this one. You can see this command. You just open this one, uh, just copy this one, and go to the MATLAB. You can see a command window in the middle sign in the bottom. Then put the command in here and press enter. And you can see a document about this stuff. Can go through it. We have some like uh, demonstration on how to use the example here, but it's okay that you don't uh, need to go through all the command below, but you can just have a simple, like have a look of the top. You will introduce some like basic of the hopping. So how can we like run the simulator? We want to run this simulator. So you need to find the run button here, or you can simply press F5 to run this one. So I select here and press F5. Then you can see this one. It's just like a program. The first one is to select the algorithm. And second one is the hop increment. Third one is the channel map. And let's have a look. What's this stuff? Let's just press this button. Press the green button, then you can see we have some output like this. So what does this graph mean? This means we are like simulate. We are going to send 100 packets, Bluetooth packets to outside. And what will be the channel for each time? So as you can see here, this graph, this live chat is the channel hopping. So the first packet, we are using channel five. Second packet, we are using channel 10, and so on so far. Just like this. When we reach the channel 35, ne the next one, the next channel should be 40, right? But we know that there is no 40 channel in Wi-Fi. So we need to go back to, go back from zero, right? So we come to three. So how can we get three after 35 instead of zero or one or two? Why are we come to this point? So you need to know what is the algorithm behind this. So to understand this algorithm, we need to open the documentation here. Uh, here, this one. We go to the page 2644. You can see it's the channel selection algorithm one. So it, this one, make sure you have a read of it. But basically just this equation and this equation. So we have two equation in the document. So you need to have a carefully look of it. And this flow chart is pretty useful to understand it. Uh, let me just have a screenshot here. Then let's go to the graph here. We can see because the increment is five, right? You can go to this flow chart and go through them step by step. For, for example, the first one, 
the, we are here, the last unmatched channel is zero, right? Because we just started and the hop increment is five. So we run the basic algorithm. Uh, what is the basic algorithm? It's in here, right? It's in here. Unmap channel equal to last unmap channel plus hop increment and mod 37. So the last unmap channel, because it's, it is the first hop, so should be zero plus five mod 37 equal to five. So that's it. So that's the reason why we have five in the first hop. So when we come to 35, why it is three here? You can follow this flow chart again. So the last unmapped channel, it, which is 35 plus five, which is 40. And 40, and what should we do here? Is map channel a use channel? So we use this algorithm, which is uh, is free, right? So is it a map channel or not? So you need to figure this out by yourself. But yeah, it's obviously yes. So we just use this one as the channel index. But what if, let me create another one. Now I select the channel three as a bad channel and let's see what happened. So only channel three is not available. So let's try, try to generate a new one. This one is a new one. So as you can see here, it's just exactly the same at the beginning as the previous one, but this one become four. So what happened? Why is four right now? Because three is not available. So why don't we choose two instead of four? So you need to figure this out. Uh, but basically just need to understand this equation and this equation. So that's the secret why we choose four instead of two here. You need to uh, check this equation and how can we do the calculation by yourself. It's not hard to understand. Okay, so let's just have more example on this one. When I select the channel here, you can see become gray box, right? which means it's a bad channel. The bad channel means this channel is not available right now. So the ch channel hopping cannot hop to this channel. And this hop increment, we can choose another value. So every time we will hop 10 channel, then we can try to generate and then new output is like this. So the first one, channel is 21. So why is 21? Because the first available channel is 11, right? So the 11 plus the hop increment 10 equal to 21. And the second one is 20. So it is weird, isn't it? So you need to understand the equation and explain why it hop to 20 in the first in the second one. But it's not pretty hard to understand, it's just this one. So that's how we play it. Then let me have a look of the, the specification. The first question is to uh, explain the first equation on map channel. So it's in here, the first equation on map channel. So just explain this one. It's pretty easy. 
And the second one is to explain the second equation. Right? The IMAP channel is better channel. Seen here. So if the IMAP channel is an unused channel, I'll just explain this one. And the third one, you need to have a look. Consider that uh, there is a Wi-Fi channel one, it's a bad channel. So 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi channel one is a bad channel. So we need to select the bad channel in here to generate a, a output. So which one should we select? Do you have any idea? So in the question three, we need to play with this simulator. We need to generate an output put and put this one into our report. As we mentioned here, the hops is equal to 10, so it's 10, and the output, the total hop is 10 hops. And we need to select the bad channel here. You need to figure this out by yourself. So what is the bad channel? You can select like this. I select Bluetooth channel one is a bad channel. And, and this is the output. So I can tell you this one is not the correct answer. So you need to figure this out by yourself by checking what is the frequency of Wi-Fi channel and Bluetooth channel. So you can uh, have a check of the lecture slides of the frequencies, or you can just search online. Should be pretty easy for you. Just be aware of that. This one is Wi-Fi channel one, and this box is Bluetooth channel one. So you may need to select multiple channels. Please do your own research. I think you can handle this one. But just be aware that the hop increment and the number of channels in total. So you can select this one like as you wish, you can select five or 10, 11, doesn't really matter. But this one, number of channel hops to generate should be 10. For example, like this, and probably your selection is something like this one, but this one is not the true answer. Please, please do not use this one. And for example, you have the output like this, then you put this graph into your report and attach with the calculation. So you need to examine why do we have the like first hop is 10 and the second hop is 20 and third one is 30 and fourth one is five, etc. So why do we have this hop like this? So you need to show the equation and calculate them one by one to show your understanding on that. So it's seven and 13 here. So you need to show the calculation behind it. So why the, the third hop is 30, but fourth hop is seven here. So you need to show like why is seven here. And put this one into your report. And that's all the lab five content. So if you have any doubts, please post it on the chat or open your microphone. And that's it for our lab five. So you can try to do the installation right now and see if you have any trouble with it. Mm -hmm. 
and try to play around with this one. This one. You can also click this box to visualize the channel hopping. So you can see what, what's happening here. You just click and you can see the channel is hopping, right? Step by step. Uh, so we have a question here. How to open the file in MATLAB? Where do I run the command? Okay, so to run the command, I guess you cannot find this one, right? So let me show you from beginning. It, uh, you may have something like this. Something like this, right? It's a clear window of that. Clear window of that and just paste that command in the document. So it's open example. You just paste this command, the command window and then press enter. And you can see this document. After you see this document, which means you can run it you just press the button run and then that's it. Uh, when you paste it, I get an error. Oh, please, uh, could you please show that? Let me have a check. Like, uh, yeah, I'll share my screen. Yes, let me, let me check. Uh, let me allow you to share the screen, okay. Now you can share the screen. I think probably you haven't installed the simulator or something. You need to install the add-ons. Uh, find the example. So there's no arguments Bluetooth. So did you install the simulator? Could you please check the add-ons? Uh, I, I cannot see the window of the add-ons. Oh. I think you may need to install uh, another one. Let me check. Just please, could you please just show that box? Uh, so you can't see the, you can't see the add-ons? Yes, I cannot. Oh, wait. Let me have a double check. So could you please search uh, communication toolbox? This? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let me check. Learn more. Yeah. Uh, sign into install, I think. You, you, um, can, you can stop sharing and try to uh, log in and try to. Like, so I have to use my like uni email ID? Yes. Okay. So log into this one and install, install it and try again. Okay. Yeah. And let me know, please. Yep. Thank you.
and I will also share my screen in here. So this is my add-ons in my MATLAB. So you can have a double check if you have the same one. You can try to install the, all the toolbox if you cannot run it. But I think this one should be enough. Otherwise, you try this one, Bluetooth toolbox. But let's just install the communication toolbox first. Uh, it's not enough. I need to add on Bluetooth toolbox. Okay, I see. So we need to install this one, like in addition. I see, probably it's like, depends on the version of that. For old version of MATLAB, we don't need to install the Bluetooth toolbox. The new, the latest version, we may need to install this one. But I'm not pretty sure because I install my MATLAB and it comes with this toolbox because I select to install them before I install the uh, MATLAB. So when I was running the installation of Bioshock, I select uh, it's not, it's installation of MATLAB. I select all of them. So try to install these two, I guess. And this is the output, output. And yeah, and play with this one. Select some bad channel in the simulator and have a look of the output. So, so just run it. Please let me know if you have any trouble. Yeah, and that's it for our lab file. You can stay here until the end if you have any uh, any question. And feel free to go if you have no doubt. Uh, yeah, just one more thing is about the submission. As you can see here, what do we need in the submission? You need to attach the figures which is this one, something like this, but this one is not the correct answer. So attach something like this into a report and then do some calculation be, uh, after this, like just show that why the first one is five and the second one is 10 and et cetera. And why after 35 is eight. So show us some calculation behind this one. 
and that's it. Yeah, this one is pretty easy. So we don't have much thing to say. But if you have any doubt, just send to the chat. Otherwise, you can you are free to go. Uh, and we have the assignment help session start from this week, uh, this Friday. And we will have help session every week until week 10. But you can also ask question in here if you have any doubts or question regarding to the assignments. I do we need to add equation for each point in task three or just some of them? Uh, add equation in task three. So what do you mean by this? I don't think you need to add equation here, but you need to show the calculation. Uh, you can uh, create an Excel or something, create a table. So the first hop is five, and the second hop is 10. Show, show us how do you do this calculation. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it, is, it is equation, because the first hop is in here, right? You can, you can uh, use that 10 equal to five plus five mod 37. So that's the reason why it's 10 here. And this one, 30, 35. 35, we can sh use this one. Our map channel equal to 35 plus five mod 37, which is three. But three is the that channel in this graph. So we go to the second equation. Yeah, how many use channels? And what is the unmapped channels? So you can follow this flow chart and do the calculation and explain why it is eight here. Yeah, you can uh, show the equation, but just replace the number of it because we have already know the what is the this equation. You get, you, you can replace this stuff with the real number. Yes, please try to send your question like in public so everyone can know what I'm saying if you have any question. Yeah. So for this one, you need to use the algorithm in lab four to retrieve the signal strength and run the cover time and multiple location. But we apply filter to okay, only one SSID information. Mm, so for our assignment, it's pretty open. It's pretty open-minded. So you don't need to uh, do it with our method in lab four, but lab four is a pretty good like beginning for our assignment. You can use this method, but you can definitely improve it. Uh, you are saying that we need to apply a filter to get one SSID information, yes, that, that, could, that could be a possible, but you, you can also think that, how about I collect all the information, all the SSID around us, 
and like use this one as a fingerprint or something. Uh, if you want to do the like distance estimation, then you should apply the filter. If you are doing some like fingerprint, maybe maybe not. Depends on your algorithm. So if you want to use the distance, like for example, uh, because we know if we can figure out three different uh, three different Wi-Fi hotspots around us and of and their distance, then we can draw the circle and figure out where we are, just like this. Let me draw some picture. Um, okay, so check on page. For, for example, this one. Uh, this one is a shopping center, let's say. It's a shopping center. And we have a you are standing in the middle, then we have some, let's say this one is the CBA, Commonwealth Bank. And we have another bank, which is the West Pack. And we have another stuff, which is the library oh okay and you are standing in the middle right so if you can get these three hotspots the distance and draw the circle then that's how you get your location but this method is not pretty reliable uh, as you can see the uh, RSSI is not stable. So you, you may need to figure out another way to improve this method. So uh, this one is the distance in here. The, the distance, sorry about my bad drawing. Basically, for the assignment, I just need to use the. So, what sort of the output are you expecting? Pure text or diagram? Uh, yes, for the input and output. So, you are asking, what should we have like for our program, right? You can use that as a like pure text, it's fine. If you can output something like a map, that will be great. So, if you can. Uh, do some prediction like by up, output some graph that would be excellent but you can also simply output some text for example if I am here I'm standing here then once you run your program in here you should be able to print uh, I am in the let's say front door of CBA right now uh, if you are in here you can, you can print, uh, we are like just inside the Commonwealth Bank right now. And if we come to here, like you can say, uh, we are in the front door of library. Or you can, if you can show some diagram like this, that would be great. How many test validation points should we have in assignment? Uh, so you're talking about the volume of the data, right? So, uh, so for the test and validation, you should not less than 10 for this one. But if you want to prove you have enough data in the first part, as we mentioned, Ah, in CVA, was that? Uh, depends, depends on the size of the map. So 
So basically, we want you to have very high accuracy in the localization, right? But we are not asking you to like have uh, accuracy like in centimeters. That's not possible. But we are just trying to ask you to have like do as much as you can. So you can have, let's say, 10 square meters of accuracy. So you can only detect if you are in this area or this area or this area. This is fine. Or you can say you can, your program can also detect which part are you in in the library and which part are you in in the uh, bank. Depends on you. So if you have better performance, of course you will have higher marks. And we do have the marking rubric mentioned that should be accuracy should be around three meters, I guess. But I would say less than five meters, uh, less than 10 meters is good enough. Uh, can I do it in my home, like different rooms and different positions? Uh, I'm afraid that your home do not have enough uh, like Wi-Fi hotspots around that to make it accurate. And the size is pretty small. Uh, otherwise, you have a very big house. I don't know. You can do that. But I recommend you to go to the shopping center or uni. Uh, can I use three, four mobile phones hotspots? Uh, yes, if there are any reasons stop you to like going out, uh, you you can you you can do that. You can do that, but I recommend you to do that like in the shopping mall as we mentioned in the specification. So we want you to have some like real not real world scenario stuff because we want you to like localize while unknown Wi-Fi hotspots. So even we cannot assess that kind of hotspots, we can still use it to do the localization. So that's what we want. We don't need to connect them like together. <clears throat> Uh, for example, if it's line of sight, then it will be feasible. But if it isn't, it will be difficult. Yes, as the signal strengths will be weakened by obstacles. Yes, exactly. So this method, like to use the distance measurements to calculate the distance, to calculate the uh, location is pretty hard, I would say. So you may need to have a check of the reading at the end of the specification. You can try to use the fingerprint or other method, but yeah, this way is the like simplest way to do that. But the accuracy, I would say is not that good. Uh, hello, Ray, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I have a question, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Please share screen. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can. Um, here, the channel one of Wi-Fi. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, 2.4 uh, uh, gigahertz. Yeah. Um, so it start from... Uh, uh, this value and in that this value yeah and if i have a look at the um, slide uh, our preprint uh, yes. chapter yeah uh, it seems to me like the channel 10 is not in the channel one the channel 10 of um, uh, bluetooth is not in the range of channel one of the wi-fi yeah um, but yeah yeah but if i look at the picture below Yes. 
uh, it seems that channel 10 is inside the range of uh, the channel one of Wi-Fi. Okay, so you may need to check what is the value like in the documents because this is a graph. It may not be accurate. Okay. I see. Yeah, um, but you are pretty, pretty close to the correct answer, I would say. Yeah, I, I actually, I was just wondering whether channel 10 is in or not, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so you, yeah. you can try to search that and put it in your report. Uh, okay. It, so just I, tell us why it's in the range or why it's not. Just show me the source. Like, for example, you search online and yeah. you, can, you can put the source. Okay, I see. That. I mean, one of the picture should be wrong. Uh, yes. That's my I, feeling. Okay. Yeah, yes, it is. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Hi, Ray. Hello. I'm just looking at the assignment, not the lab yet. Yep. So I did look at the um uh the fingerprint um fingerprinting PDF. So that provided uh for the assignment, right? Yeah. So uh well my understanding is my understanding is they will actually pick one SSID and then uh we'll use like multiple access point, basically, which is the BSSID, and then yep. to record yep. the uh, uh this is I, basically the signal string. Yes. But like, for example, if it's not light of sight, right? Then um. Yes. Then the signal strength will be like quite weak. For example, there's a concrete right between the um. Yeah. Uh, the APs and the receiver, right? Then, yes. then will we have some sort of um maybe like the value will be like the really fluctuation, big. right? Yes. The fluctuation will be quite big basically it is so we may need to apply a sort of filter on the data like how can you like have, have okay, I know what you mean. calculation for that you need to uh, you can check their paper i think they do have some measurement to do that like they can apply a kind of equation or apply a Future depends on some somehow condition. Okay, so uh, okay, if that's the case, right? Yes. Uh, do you want it to be like some sort of uh live, uh, calculation or just? Um... Uh yes. So for our program, we should be able to run the test with our data. So we will ca capture some data, right, with Wireshark or our own program. Uh, that, that that's that's not a problem. Okay. Uh, yes. So basically, and you you just like feed some uh data in and then just get the uh estimate. Uh, yeah. Um, that's the first this. part. That's the first part. And the second part is we need to run in the real world environment. So you so, guys will run in the real world environment as well. Yes. So you need to use the Wi-Fi API instead of the Wireshark. But yeah, if you have trouble on that, you can you can say that uh. My program can only work with the Wireshark. That's that's fine, but of course you if if you can like run it online directly without Wireshark, that would be great. Okay, that's no problem. Uh, I will also do that. Yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah. One question: You going to Miranda Westfield to test my app? Uh, I would say if if it's close to us, we can go to there to test, but usually we will just test the offline data you have provided. But we want you to go to the Miranda Westfield to test your own program in the video. So in the demo video, we want you to show some like real world scenario. So, stuff. 
you actually want us to like um some sort of selfie video like uh, uh it's like not necessary to be a selfie if you are you are too shy to do that but you as you can just bring the device and record the screen or something or you can show some uh, <laughs> like powerpoint stuff that's fine it depends on you you can have a look of the paper uh we have provided at the end of the specification they do have some demonstration yeah i know i know paper. i saw that i thought we just need to demo the um yes. record yes it's okay to have selfie and if you don't want to <laughs> selfie that's fine <laughs> okay all right um all right that kind of makes sense like for example right if i use like the uh -huh. idea that i mentioned previously like we i use the filter to log a uh, specific ssid yes and now we use the business id to actually uh like to check the location basically basically it's pretty much the same as the like uh the pdf that you guys provided right yeah yeah so that's what i was gonna do but if you actually want to test the code then the filtering won't work because I gonna hard code the uh, SSID name. Uh, let me check. Does that uh, make sense? How about you have like two, like entry of your program. So the first one should be a work online in the real world scenario. So we don't need to input something, uh, input other stuff into it. And the second one should be like the offline version. Let's say we just input a trace file or some sort of data into a program and it can output some kind of re result. So we can test your program is working or not in like in our own computer. Is that okay? Mm. All right, I actually need to think about this because I don't know what sort of uh, test data you're gonna put on it. Uh, that's the problem. Uh, yeah, so we will try to test your program with your data. Is that is it possible that you can upload your test data? Uh, 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 no, we are not going to use the like our own data to test your program because everyone will choose different place, right? Most of us will choose different like shopping center or place in uni. So we cannot test your program like with our own data. Otherwise, you will be oh, really okay. hard to get a correct accuracy. So we will use your own data provided to us to test your program. So it's just like a very small research program. You need to prove yourself. You need to prove your data is like enough to test your program. And the accuracy of your program is pretty good. That's it okay yeah that it makes sense it makes sense yeah so i would say there's no standard answer for this program i have a rough idea just not sure if it's gonna work yes um, yeah you can try to build that program first and you can bring it to the help session which will be every tuesday and friday from this week what so time uh, we will announce it on the Moodle later. If if it's like business hour, I might not be able to catch it. Uh, I think we do have the after hour. Yeah, sixteen. Uh, no, probably eighteen to twenty. Yeah, that that's okay. Yeah, in Friday or Tuesday. I uh, I will have a double check like that. Yeah, but you can also come to the lab and ask me the question. It's also the same. It's the same. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I might just ask you on the lab and join the lab, then it's better. Yeah, so we will have more, a lot of help sessions. So if you have any doubt, just bring the question or bring your demo uh, assignment to the help session. Yep. Okay, cool. So we basically, we're just going to use the lab for uh, algorithm and basically yes. it's pretty much the same. But we just uh, apply the another algorithm on top of it to do some sort of um distant. Okay. Yes. No problem. Um, someone need your help, basically. Uh, yeah. Right. You, I'll just let you know first. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, but oh. yeah, you're right. 
So we can use the lab four as our starter. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. gonna do. That's why I just want to confirm because I can see that the lab four is pretty much like the pre uh pre, pre requirement. Yes. Yes, it of is. the assignment. Uh, you still have trouble running the program. Yes, please. Uh, what's right. what is the output like? The to... error message or something? Um, still yeah. the same. Well, sure. Is it uh, still the same? I, 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 let me so check. It's, uh, it's saying that you the you need to install the communication toolbox, but I installed it already. And uh, I can see it in my add-ons that I have the communication toolbox, but it's still saying it's not installed. Uh, it's toolbox library. <laughs> Let me check. I can see you do have the file of that, but you cannot run it. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So when you click the run button, it will show this one, right? Yeah. Can you try to you know, click that one again? Uh, the run button. I see nothing happened. So I think you need to install the library. Uh, but didn't I oh, just yeah. install Another that? thing to be mentioned is you are using an old version of MATLAB. Uh, try to use the newest version because we do have some like problem with the old version, but you can try to figure out where's the library at first try to install the community uh, communication toolbox library uh, i think you need to install another add-on to solve this problem otherwise you can install the latest version which is oh. the build to do well i'll show you the add-ons that i have yeah communication yes i think should be enough signal processing. No, I just installed this one communication toolbox. Uh, uh, let me check. Let me just give me one sec. Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, we are using different version. Let me try. Let me check what kind of add on do we have. ESP communication. I have another one called Bluetooth Toolbox. Can you search that on the add-on store? It called Bluetooth Toolbox. Have type it in the chat. Can you try to search that one? Yeah, I, I uh, searched. Uh, yeah, because I cannot see your screen if you are like that part. Uh, oh, sign to buy or get trial. <laughs> that's weird. That's, that's pretty weird. Uh, can you try to install this one and see if it's work or not? Do I have to buy it? No, definitely not. We will uh, spend no, we will not spend any money on that. I, I'm not pretty sure because it seems like they moved this toolbox to the latest version of MetaLab. Yeah, please try to install this toolbox okay. and see if it's worked or not. And if you, if, if, if you cannot install it, this one, then just uninstall the MATLAB and try to install the latest version of MATLAB. Okay. Yeah, because your version is two years ago. I see, okay. I'm using Linux with Wi-Fi adapter. 
Will this be a problem for assignment? This means your testing will need to use Linux and change the interface. Uh, I don't think this one is a problem because as I mentioned before, uh, we are not going to like install your program and bring the device to the real world scenario, right? Your program should be able to work with the data provided by you. So we can have some test for that. So it is okay we um, use Linux to run your code, but the interface, I don't think we will use, use, your, use the same device to test the code. Usually we will test your code like in the VLAB. Uh, I mean, my Wi-Fi adapter is WLAN 1, so you may need to change WLAN 0, zero to test it. Uh, it's, it's not this thing, I think. Because I as I mentioned before, we are not going to run the program with our own Wi-Fi adapter to test it. So we will not have this problem. Yeah, so as you can see, we need your program can work with offline data and real world scenario. And we will only test with the offline data. Uh, about the assignment specification, can you please explain the data set data volume? Yeah. So for the data volume, if you want to prove you have enough data in here, because as I mentioned before, we will use this data to test your program. So that's the first thing. And the second thing uh, to prove you have adequate data you need to like show a curve if you are using machine learning to show that uh, by adding more data, the accuracy will not improve. If you are not using machine learning, for example, you use an uh, equation to do the prediction, then we don't need that much data, I think. But you should also have adequate, like let's say more than 10, uh, probably not, probably more than that to let us to test your data. Um, hi, Ray. Um, the data volume, um, which means um, like in lab four, we catch the instant value of the RSS yes. from a different um, AP. Yes. And the volume means for each um, I, each AP, we need to um, catch more than like 10 uh, instant values. Uh, or, for, for example, yeah. uh, like for the data volume, you need to prove it's 
enough, right? Uh, and for example, you want to prove you have yeah. very good accuracy, let's say 95%. My question is, sorry, my question is, uh, um, uh, yeah. the data volume, which means uh, we need to have enough of the AP, the numbers of AP, I mean, uh, like, yeah. uh, you need to have uh, five, uh, five AP, uh, or you need to have 10 AP, um, or you need, Another way to understand is uh, you need to check for each because you are catching the instant value. Yeah. So, so we need to um, check uh, how many instant values like the, the uh, where shark is catching. So we need to check the av get an average um, RSS yes. for each AP. And so that. You can do which, that. Sorry? Uh, you can do that. So which so what do you mean by that? Like, so, so which, which way to understand the data volume? So it uh, means that we need to, 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 to val validate that like five AP is enough, good enough to um, provide the positioning of um, uh, uh, according to the fingerprint or we need to validate like we need to at least catch more than uh, five minutes uh, of, for each I, AP. I see. I see. Yeah. I know what you mean right now. So yeah, yeah. let me let me show my screen to demonstrate this one again. So this this one again. So you you may talking about this one, this circle, right? Uh, you may say, uh, if we need five or six or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this really depends on you, but it's not about the data volume. I I would say. So this one is like talk about the like environment for surrounding environment. So of course, if we have a loss, that would be great. But this one is not compulsory, but you, you are trying to select the environment like this. We have lots of uh, available AP around you. But this one is not about the data volume. So the data volume reach is this one. So for example, you are standing here for five minutes and collect the data for five minutes. That's just example. You, you can uh, collect only two minutes, that's fine. Depends on your data. And you can stand here and try to collect again. And stand here, collect, try to stand here and collect. And yeah, as much as you can. So th this is data volume. So you just stand in somewhere and take a note. So this place is like at which time and at which place. So you do the collection and save as a trace file or something. And then you come to here and open the Wireshark or your own program and start collection again. And then save as another file. Okay, I see. Um, so uh, which means at the beginning stage of our uh, assignment, we, yes. it's better for us to first check how many minutes left that we can get a stable average value yes. or yeah, something like that, right? Yeah, you can prove that like by show some diagram. You can say, oh, I stand here for two minutes because I think two minutes is enough by uh, having this evidence and then I can. Uh, you can okay. compare like two minutes and three minutes and four minutes. What's the difference on accuracy? Okay, I see, yeah, thank you. No problem.
what if all the IEPs are on different channels? Because you can only monitor one channel at a time. Um, I don't think so. For example, uh, you can try the left four. Uh, if you are use the net SH1, your receiver will pick up the beacon packet to get the channel info and others. Yes. So if you can have a look of the lab four, we will demonstrate how to use. All right. Um, for the accuracy one, right? Um, that you guys just um talked about. Yes. If I don't use machine learning or um deep learning stuff. Yes. How to actually prove the accuracy? Uh. Because I can't get a, a measure tape to actually you know check the distance. Yes. So for this one, you need to solve the fluctuation, obviously, right? Because yeah, that can the, be done. Yeah. So. The yeah. first one should be apply some kind of measurement or uh, algorithm to to which do is, some calculation. Which is the one that you showed previously, like for the left four, that um the one to convert the percentage one uh, to I I I think is that can we use that one? Yeah, of course you can yeah. definitely use that one, but yeah, that's you can discover more by reading the paper. The PDF paper, like the uh the uh, fingerprint. Printing yeah, paper PDF. Yes, we have I some did. paper attached with the assignment specification, right? At yeah, the I end. Did. So have a check. Yeah, I did read all of them pretty much. Okay, so you must be have some idea, I think. Yeah, but I just don't know how to actually prove the accuracy. Accuracy, uh, like I'm not pretty sure. Like, what have you done so far? No, I've done nothing. So okay, start a year. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so probably like I recommend you to have a like very uh draft draft version. So let's just make it work at first, and try to improve it, and like re take a note for all the stuff you have. For example, you can say uh at the first version it is accuracy of twenty percent, and I by applying this method it increased to how much. Something like this. So yeah, we can see how much effort have you put into this one. Yeah, but without actually get the measurement between the APs and the receive uh and the receiver, right? I can't show you the actual accuracy. Oh why? You cannot show the actual like, accuracy. Well, my understanding is like I use my um algorithm. To uh, check yes. the distance between all APs. Yes. And then I go to another location to so check again, and then I will like get an estimate location, right? Mm -hmm. No, if I run the program. So, so the program the should have output of the exactly location or area, right? So it will predict where are you right now. So, because we have already know where are we. Yes. So we can compare. So if, if you run this test for 10 times and like, let's say nine of them is correct, then you can say accuracy is 90%. But of course you, we need to run more tests. So you mean like, I would just use my output to actually check the distance between all different AP? to ask them like to guess I'm accurate or not. Is that what you mean? Uh, I'm not sure about the distance like, I mentioned. Like for example, uh, I run the test like 10 times. Yes. And then nine, none of them, like nine times of the result are pretty much similar. Yes. Like and pretty much the same. And then one yes. is like not, then yes. I would just assume my percentage is like Mm -hmm. Ninety percent accuracy or ninety percent faulty, like wrong. Like nine of them are correct or not? Nine of them are pretty yeah, close. Like, nine of them are pretty close. Not not pretty, pretty close. Like they are like the answer, like the result are pretty much the same, right? Yes. For example. Yes. And I just, what can I say? Like, 
are they correct or are they wrong? I can't just guess them. I have to like, if I, I to prove the accuracy, I need to get the actual measurement between the APs and the receiver location. Is that yeah, makes sense? But when you collect the data, you should like make a label, right? Like, where did you collect this data? Yeah. So when you test it, you should be able to know the true answer. But not the actual accuracy, uh, not the actual measurement. Oh, really? But, like, oh, I, if, I if see, you, I see. But if you go but, to, yeah, I see. Field, because, right? because we are, <laughs> yeah, I, I see. I, your question is, we, because we don't know where the router is, right? Yes. So we don't know where, like, how far from the IP to our device, but that's not a problem. We don't care about it, right? So if you are using the distance estimation, all the, all the outputs should we have is the location right now. It's not a distance. So we are not asking you to output what is the distance like to each stop or to each hotspot. All we need is like, you can say we are in front of the cause and that's it. So we, we don't need you to output the like estimate distance to, from each hotspot. I think that's easier to give like the location. So instead of like I'm yeah, because you are using this method to like do the prediction, so the, which is fine, but we don't care about the ca calculation in the mid like like in the middle side. So if the distance prediction is not correct, that's fine. But we only need you to have the like correct prediction on the outputs, which is the location, instead of the like the distance. If I get the distance, then I know the location. Is that correct? Maybe. Yeah. So if if you I... can, yeah, have the accurate. All right, I, I, I'll look at it first then, maybe. Then i ask the question. Okay. All right, cool, thank you. But the tutor don't know whether to testing location now. Less than 10 minutes or larger than 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, I, I cannot understand this one. So what does this mean? To testing location. Um. I mean that in the spec, um, yeah. so the marking is the, uh, like for um, uh, uh, like the the accuracy uh, the the top level is um, like you can get four to five marks. Yeah. And the second, um, like it it depends on um how many, within how many meters um, yeah. that you can uh, uh, yes. really detect. But, yeah. but how, how do you know as a tutor, um, know the environment of our real uh, testing environment? I mean, yeah. I, can, I can say that these two locations are within two meters, but you don't know whether I'm saying it's, uh, it's true or not, you know? Yeah, so we always trust the students as they will uh, provide the truth in the report. So, but yeah, th this is a problem. So yeah, we will but... validate the data <laughs> with, the, with your own data set and of course with our own understanding. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but basically we will always trust the students. Yeah, but, I but, see. But we will always have some measurement to validate the data. I see, I see. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but not, not every student uh, is honest. So <laughs> that's my, my question. Um, yes. So the like academic honesty is a kind of very serious question. So it's better to provide the real data. Otherwise, if like, for example, we figure out this data probably is not true, we may contact you to provide like more details about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if I submit the the data, and then I said, okay, I take the um, validation, and then I checked 
my accuracy is within five meters. But yes. the the actual situation is uh, it's ten meters. So, yeah. Yeah. so how so, can you how can you really check check about this? So in the report, you should prove this. Like you need to say, uh, my accuracy is like let's say less than five meters. So you need to prove that by yourself. So you need to prove this one to us. Your accuracy is really that good, right? Like by providing some data, some testing stuff, so we can see if this one is true or not. And yeah, but like my understanding of the the specification, um, is we we move from one position to another position, and yeah. then, um, like if I move from from the 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 door of um, a uh, CBA to uh, Westpac. Yes. As I, I said, okay, the two locations distance um, about five meters. Mm -hmm. And then sub submit the data to you. And then you can check whether the data gives the, the difference of the, the, tells the difference of the location. But, but you, you can't tell that whether the distance is really five meters. Maybe it's 12 meters. Okay, so this kind of uh, like, because this one is the real world scenario stuff. So it's very easy to validate one if you are doing this one in the like, uni or uh, in a shopping center, right? Yeah, but another factor is um, if you are testing a different environment, you get different uh, strengths of um, uh, a AP, yeah, and you might get different results. Yeah, that's correct. So you, you, if if you test my um, code and you yeah. said, okay, you you are not really, we, we can't really um, uh, say that you provide the the good um, the, the the trustable uh, yeah, yeah, code right. or data, but I can argue that. Yes. Because we are testing of different APs and different APs give different uh, fingerprints. I, I see. So, yeah. so it's not the same case. I think uh, if we, like we are uh, like doubting your honesty, we may yeah. ask you to provide more details when you do run the program. So we, uh, we will say that uh, run your program again or something to validate that one or provide more details of your like, specification. But if we think you have provided sufficient stuff to prove your accuracy is enough, then we will trust you just like the research program, right? So you can say, uh, this paper is not honest. They say that they have 99% of accuracy, but no one can achieve that by repeating their algorithm. But they can argue that uh, they are running this in their uh, own lab or something yeah, and they, they can do reach that one but no one can reach their accuracy with the, the same algorithm like let's say a lot of people try that but no one can do with that one then we will think they are lying and i see at, at least it should work for the common uh, environment like the shopping mall that's okay yes, okay but, yeah, but, yeah just like a research program you are true we do have lots of like fake data or fake stuff in the like research program, but yeah, it's very, I think it's kind of easy to identify which one like is obviously fake. I see, thank you. So if you are like writing the report, try to prove everything with the like data you have. So we, we can see that oh, it's really the real stuff. Uh, otherwise, if you can really achieve a very high accuracy, but you don't have the data to prove it, we may think uh, this one is maybe not true or something. So that's how we judge the assignment.
Can the left three and left four result be released? Yes, I think so. We will re release the left three this week. And, oh, I think we have already released the left three. And left four should be released in this week. Could you please check the model for your lab three result? Uh, let me check. You cannot see the. Yeah, we'll double check on it. Um, hi, Ray, where, where should we check it? Um, I can share my screen, but I checked it here. But can you see my screen? Uh, I, yes, I but can. Is, is this oh, a, yeah, a correct? I see. But I <laughs> don't know whether this is a correct. Um, uh, yeah, I, we need that. to. I'm sorry, this one is like probably have some problem. So you need to go to the submission link. Uh, go to the submission link. Okay. Yes, go. Uh, where did you submit it? And go to that one. And and you mean here? Uh, lab yeah, to lab, lab three. three. Lab okay. three. Ah, uh, I see. This one. And let me check if you. Yeah, you can see. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, marks. yeah. I can. I can see it now. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming, Yuha. Yes, okay, see you soon.
I'm about to close the meeting. Hey, James, do you still have any chat, like question? Okay, thanks for coming. So I will see you next week. Okay, bye.